What can you tell us about this elite team that's been sent in to help dislodge the ship? Well, these guys are the uh, the people you call when uh, really is a matter of last resort. So, um, Smith, which is a, a unit of a Dutch company, they are basically an international marine salvage operation. They're, they're the kind of legends of saving these stranded ships. Um, and what they will do in the coming uh, coming hours and days is try and figure out how best that they can move the Ever Given from where it is. So firstly, they have to kind of get it level and make sure there's no no danger in trying to move it, and then actually set about doing that. Um, and they've got precedent for doing it as hmm. well. There's been some uh, some pretty kind of major events that they've been they've been hitting before, and it's companies like Smith who are these big global marine salvage companies who kind of come in like the marines and save the day and at the last minute when we get these these issues like we're having at the moment in the Suez Canal. So Alex, how are, how are they going to, to be able to do this? We've seen images of, of diggers and, and tugs uh, trying to dislodge the ship. What about this elite team? What are the other tools that they have available to them? So there's a whole host of things. The first thing they do is, is they map it out. They they use computers, they use high-tech software and stuff to, to figure out exactly how they can proceed. Then it comes on to the practical stuff. The first thing they do tends to be to, to get rid of the, the weight that's on board the ship. That starts with fuel, with things like the ballast water that keep it stable. Um, but you also get into other things. We've seen the pictures, for example, of trying to dig out the trenches around the ship. These These salvage teams have divers that go with them who will kind of dive down below the ship to try and see the lay of the land there. Um, in previous trips, they've they've designed specific bits of kit just to make sure, for example, if a ship has run aground so badly that it needs to be chopped up, they'll, they'll build specific drills or specific bits of wire that can help break up a ship hmm. easier. Um, so we'll see the ship being potentially lightened. And if, if it gets to an extreme circumstance, we may see them taking some of the containers off of the ship. Oh, wow. And that can be done with giant cranes, or even sometimes talking to um, one of Smith's competitors yesterday, Resolve Marine, um, they were suggesting that sometimes what can happen um, is that giant helicopters get flown in to try and take the containers off these ships. So you can see from divers to welders to helicopters, there's, there's a huge range of, um, of pretty quirky uh, bits of kit that these guys tend to use. I'm wondering just about how traffic is snarled right now. We had some stats yesterday from Bloomberg, 185 vessels waiting to cross the, the canal, $9.6 billion worth of traffic every single day. How does this manifest for, for us uh, on the demand side and on the supply side, right? Like we have demand for goods and services, goods that come from uh, these, global shipping, these global shipping routes. What does it mean for us? Does it mean more expensive gas prices, that toilet paper shortage we were talking about earlier? Well, it's, uh, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question with many answers. And there are obviously other ways to, to ship stuff around the globe. Um, the Suez Canal is a major conduit because it speeds things up. But one option is that shippers, rather than waiting in this queue, will go round to the, the southern Cape of Africa. Um, that takes an extra couple of weeks. So you, you get delays to deliveries, but it's not, a, it's not going to be a complete sort of stoppage in worldwide freight. The issue is that delay. Um, then it varies from product to product. So, for example, lots of oil is produced in the Middle East, but there's plenty of pipeline capacity to get things across through the area that's, blockade, that's blocked. Um, actually, the, hmm. the biggest amount of, of ships that are stuck at the moment is bulk carriers, which carry things like wheat and cotton and grain and copper. Um, it's those raw commodity carriers that, that are the, the most, have the most number of stuck ships at the moment. So, the answer is it depends. It depends whether you're a, a buyer or a seller in the market. Um, you know, the U.S. is exporting some products, importing others. The same for us here in Europe. So um, it, it's not a question that has a straight answer, but clearly you're going to see hiccups in the supply chain over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. The longer this carries on, the worse it gets. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.